Hey folks, it's tea time, so that means let's start blending. It is preferable to use the smallest number of herbs possible on any medical formula because the more herbs used in a formula, the more difficult it becomes to balance out their different properties. It's also worth stating that the simpler your recipe is, the easier it is to balance out the flavors so that it tastes good. And everyone likes tasty tea. There's only so much that sweetener can help with. Today I'm mixing a recipe to address acute strep throat. I'm also treating the headache I've had the past few days along with yeast infection and I just have my period so I'm hoping to relieve all of these. Once you start putting together more than two herbs, there's some guidelines on proportions on various herbs to help build your formula. More than half of the blend should address the specific problem, your main goal, which is 60 to 75 percent of the formula. Today I will be using mountain mint or Picanthemum virginianum. I'm using 60 percent of the recipe for this. It is a diaphoretic, a carminative, an emmenagogue stimulant, stomachic decongestant, antipyretic, and antiemetic. The other half of your recipe should include herbs that have soothing, nurturing, or stimulating qualities. Because one of my main goals is to soothe my th sore throat, 30% of this recipe will consist of Calendula officinalis. It is a demulcent, emollient, mucilaginous, and rich in flavonoids. The third part of my recipe, 10%, will be fragrant giant hyssop, aka anise hyssop, Agustache funiculum. It is an antifungal, carminative, cardiotonic, disinfectant, pectoral, and antiemetic. I used a tablespoon and put it in my cup and left it in some water. After it's done steeping, at least 15 to 30 minutes, it should have a slightly golden color. Big thank you to all the teachers that have taught me so much about herbology through the years. And big thank you for supporters like you. I hope this video has helped you in blending teas. And till next time, take care.